Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host today. We've had Alex on in the last hour talking about what is really at stake here, and that is nothing less than the collapse of America into a North American Union. And of course, we're going to be joined in the third hour by Dr. Jerome Corsi, who realizes this as, as well. Unfortunately, it appears that only InfoWars and WorldNet Daily have really picked up on the blatant comments from General Petraeus and Nancy Pelosi, essentially taking the mask off. And if you're not concerned about this issue, you need to understand that this is something they've been gaming for quite some time. A collapse of the American economy so that out of that chaos and out of that collapse, they can build their new world order. This goes back, this is bipartisan as well. This is something that was being planned by Oliver North under Rex 84. They talked about different conditions and under which they would do this, where they would bring in military law and martial law. Now we have the NDAA. Does that concern you that they've actually codified into law that the military can arrest people, not tell anyone, not give you any due process, hold you indefinitely, do whatever they wish to you? That is part of the legal structure that has been set up by Republicans as well as Democrats. Now, Obama gets a lot of blame for the NDAA, and he should. He's been a tremendous hypocrite on this. He came in, told much of his base that cares about civil liberties, that he was going to be someone who was transparent, who was going to stand up for that. And yet his record has been horrendous on that. But he is doing exactly what was done with NAFTA. Just as General Petraeus pointed out, 20 years ago, they enacted the statutes. They essentially created NAFTA then. But they were very wise about how they gradually rolled this out. They didn't have the borders collapse at that point in time. They didn't incentivize massive, uncontrolled immigration that the country cannot support at that time. No, they waited a while for it. And now they are making it a fact. That's what we're going to be talking to Dr. Jerome Corsi about. We're also going to be joined by Jakari Jackson in Murrieta, California. This is a place where people have stood up and said, we don't like what's being done to our country. Isn't it interesting? That an organization created out of the lies about 9-11, Homeland Security, is now the organization that is collapsing the homeland. That has essentially erased the borders of the homeland. And yet, still continues to harass people even to an even greater degree at the airports. Stepping up new little harassments. Make sure that your phones are charged because we're not going to let you take your phones in if they don't have a charge. We're going to throw them away or confiscate them continually harassing people within the borders as they completely erase the borders. Same organization, Homeland Security. We're also going to be talking about some NSA issues, of course, because now we see that tyranny is coming out of the closet. We've got the NSA essentially channeling J. Edgar Hoover. And we're going to talk about that in historical context, as well as what we just learned from the latest rounds of Snowden leaks. We're also going to talk about Agenda 21 and how that's being rolled out in Obama's new highway program. Of course, they love to talk about sustainability. How do you get sustainability with completely open borders? They're not concerned about sustainability, either environmental or economic. They want to bring the country down. As we pointed out earlier, we've got an article up on Infowars.com. A uh, source says that Obama is giving Murrieta area immigration and custom enforcement employees temporary paid leave. And as Paul Joseph Watson points out, this is Cloward and Piven's strategy in full swing. And of course, those are two sociologists who about 50 years ago said that in order to enact their socialist utopian state, they needed to first collapse the U.S. economy. And the way to do that was with a massively expanding welfare state. And the way that they wanted to do it was through the Democrat Party. Very clear plan. We now see that being put into place. We now see NAFTA being put into place. The New World Order is bringing this together. And we're going to be covering this from Murrieta with Jakari Jackson. And we're going to be covering it from a larger perspective with Jerome Corsi. Stay with us. We'll be right back. General, what do you think about the FBI 
saying that there was a terror alert on Monday about a potential Fort Hood situation. The police are shoving people, shoving Alex, shoving the crowd. Here we go, folks, I'm being assaulted. Whether it's the radio show, the news websites, documentary films, or the nightly news, InfoWars is the tip of the spear. Is this another false flag stage attack to take our civil liberties and put more homeland security while sticking their hands down on the pants on the streets? It's up to us to set brush fires in the minds of men and women everywhere. And that's what PrisonPlanet.tv is designed to do. You watch the Assad regime is going to be blamed or accused of using chemical weapons against the so-called rebels. What we see now is a war against reality. It's a war against the truth. It's more vital than ever that supporters of freedom become members of PrisonPlanet.tv and share their membership with up to 11 friends and family. Visit InfoWarsNews.com today. Become a member, share your membership, and help take the info war to the next level. I've always believed in nutrition and herbs. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals sourced from powerful organic herbs harvested around the planet and then concentrated for maximum potency. I just received my Male Vitality about three days ago, and I must say that is good stuff. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. I jump out of bed ready to fight these criminals every day. I look forward to waking up and taking my Super Male Vitality and getting the day started. It's not just the Super Male Vitality. All the products at InfoWarsLife.com are simply amazing. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality and other powerful products from InfoWars Life. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. Most people know that iodine deficiency has been a crisis around the world. Iodine is key to so many of the body's functions, especially the thyroid. I discovered a product being developed by Dr. Group. You now know it as Survival Shield True Nascent Iodine that your body can really absorb. Then, about a year ago, he said, listen, if you think this is powerful, I'm going to come out with rare earth, deep earth crystals. And the results that I personally have had have been life-changing. Nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. This is innovating, and the best part is it helps fund InfoWars.com, the radio show, the TV show, the whole media operation promoting true libertarian ideas. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. Take advantage of this unprecedented 30% off Super Detox Special at InfoWarsLife.com. He's the T-Rex of political talk. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight in Austin. We're going to be joined at the bottom of this hour with Jakari Jackson, who is in Murrieta, California. And if you've been covering the implosion of our borders, you know that there's something very different going on there. We have the citizens of that area who are standing up to this. They see the government standing down. They see Obama putting ICE agents on temporary paid leave, telling them, we'll continue to pay you, just don't do anything about controlling immigration. They don't want it to be controlled. And many people are asking, this is a story on uh, Infowars.com from Michael Schneider, why is Obama encouraging illegal immigration when we can't take care of millions of our own citizens? In particular, the VA situation. We've got 57,000 veterans still waiting for their first appointment, according to the Daily Caller. We've got in just one VA alone in Phoenix, we've got 1,400 to 1,600 people put on an imaginary waiting list. A waiting list that they were not going to get seen. They were lied to. They were told that they were going to get something and they didn't get it. That should be a warning for the people who are coming into this country. That should be a warning for all Americans how government is lying to us. But of course, we've sent our InfoWars crew out there because the way the mainstream media is covering these protests out there, and essentially what they're trying to do is make the pro-illegal immigration um, protesters, they're, they're, they're ignoring what these agitators are doing. And, and Paul Joseph Watson put up a story yesterday that essentially showed a video 
that looked like the people that were being arrested were all pro-illegal immigration supporters who identified themselves as anarcho-communists. But the media has portrayed this as if it is the citizens who are protesting what is being done. And of course, it is a Cloward and Piven strategy. The White House is asking for another $3.8 billion just to maintain this emergency situation that they have created. They always use the crisis, and as Nancy Pelosi said, we should view this as an opportunity, and she certainly does. She uses everything that they manufacture as an opportunity to make the government bigger. But let's just take a look at what's going on in California. We've got long wait times in California as emergency rooms blaming this on Obamacare. And yet, what will happen when we import uncontrolled numbers of people into this country that don't have any means to, to provide for themselves? Many of these people unaccompanied minors. Well, there's already tuberculosis spreading at the camps. This is being reported by Fox News. They say that although a rosy picture is being portrayed by NPR, by most of the mainstream media, and even by the Department of Health and Human Services, the people that they have talked to at the camps, people who are nurses, say that there are many children who are showing classic tuberculosis symptoms, spitting up blood, a constant cough, and chest pain. What is going to happen as these people come onto the roles of the unsustainable welfare state that, that is being created in this country? And of course, this is all about the dreams of the children, as Obama likes to put it. You know, we had an American dream once. What was that dream? That was a dream to own your own home. The federal government incentivized that dream. They gave people tax credits so that they would go into debt to get a mortgage on their homes. How did that work out for Americans? How did that work out, that American dream, when we all got into debt with the bankers and then we go through a pump and dump strategy? Many, many thousands of people, tens of thousands of people have lost their homes. Many more will continue to do so. But of course, the banks were made whole. The banks came out smelling like a rose. Their losses were recouped. They said that they needed it because they didn't want massive unrest. They needed to uh, be paid off with the TARP program or there was going to be riots in the street. And yet they didn't help anybody with these mortgages. They kept all the money themselves. Now we've got the DREAM Act. And we should think about how he pumped and dumped properties. And think about the massive number of people that are, being come in, that are coming in. This is a pump and dump of people, essentially. And again, it's Cloward and Piven's strategy. But there's something else going on here, too. And that is reckless endangerment of children. So many people want to say, you just need to back off in Dallas, the mainstream media up there, in terms of reporting what was going to be happening as people were being brought into Dallas area. We had a judge go around the neighborhood telling people, you can speak, you can protest, but you need to do it within the law. Well, they have proscribed that so tightly in Dallas that there is no free speech, no protest there. We've seen that with the George Bush Library. We've seen that when InfoWars and Alex Jones went to Dallas around the JFK 50th anniversary celebration. They don't like protests. They don't like the First Amendment, frankly. And when a judge goes around door to door telling people, don't exercise your free speech, essentially. If you do so, you have to do it within the law. Well, you know, the First Amendment says Congress shall make no law. There shouldn't be any laws on our fundamental rights to protest, to address our grievances to the government. And we have a very real grievance when we are being treated like slaves in this country as the borders are being opened up and we're opening our wallets, or we should say our debt to anyone who wants to come into this country. But as they were reporting on that, they had a quote from someone there who says, hey, you're grown-ups. Don't protest kids. This isn't simply about the children. Of course, the thing that initiated this was Obama's Dream Act. That was two years ago. And that was being portrayed as they were going to help the children who were already here. But now the message has gone out that this is proactive for anyone who wants to come into the, into the country now or in the future. They will get these benefits. And it's not just for children, it's for those up to the age of 31. But there are a tremendous number of children who are coming in. What is happening to those children? You know, we just had a story that came out of Georgia where a uh, child died in a hot car. He was locked up in a hot car, got up to uh, 88 degrees, uh, maybe to the low 90s. This child died. They're bringing murder charges against the parents. Why do we do that? 
why do we compound those types of legal actions on parents who have just lost a child? Well, there's a good reason for that. We want to make an example of them. We don't.